We've been looking at some, some things that I think are really important for our Christian life, um, like our conscience. And if you don't have a clear conscience, it just messes up. It's like having something on your glasses, you know. It just messes up everything. Uh, forgiveness. You know, if you don't have that right, uh, it, it just causes problems. And tonight we're looking at it in a, we're looking at a subject a little more general, and, and the, the word irritation really doesn't come. But uh, we're, we're looking at the, the negative things that come in, into our life. And we're going to start um, in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and 29. Some of you probably have these verses memorized. If you don't, if you, don't you could. I remember going to youth camp when I was a youth, and uh, the speaker said, every Christian should know Romans 12, 1 and 2. And that week, we, he spoke about it, and we learned it, and I've never forgotten it. Romans 12, 1 and 2. And Romans 8, 28 and 29 are verses like that that uh, would be good to have in your heart so that God can bring them to your memory. Let me read Romans 8, verses, starting with verse 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are the called according to His purpose. For whom He did foreknow, He also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of His Son, that He might be the firstborn among many brethren. We'll just stop reading there. All things. God uses some definite words here. We know all things work together for good. And the Bible talks about His, his plan. He predestinated His predetermined plan is that we be like Jesus. Unfortunately, sometimes we resist Him <laughs> in His plan, but uh, God will have His way. If you know Christ as your Savior, you will be like Jesus. And uh, God is, is doing that work in, in your life. And you may not have noticed this, but not everything in life is positive. <laughs> sometimes bad things happen. Sometimes things we don't want. Sometimes they happen because of our own stupidity, and that's even worse. You know? uh, negative things affect our life, but you decide whether it will have a good effect or a bad effect. Uh, a thought I want you to keep in your mind tonight as we think about this is the pearl. You know what a pearl is? It's an irritation turned into a blessing. And uh, that's what God wants to do with the things that come into our life. Um, you've got your notes there, you can take notes or, or not, but three major sources of irritation, uh, three major sources of, of trouble. One is people. Big source of, of trouble. I was thinking of illustrations of this, and one of the illustrations that came to my mind was me. <laughs> but when I went, first went to Bible college, I went to Bob Jones University, I, I had two roommates from Georgia. You'd had to meet them. They didn't wear socks. Um, anyway, I, I was quite a cheerful soul at that time. And uh, I would get up in the morning and I would sing. And I was quite happy. And one of my roommates finally said to me, you're so happy in the morning. He said, it makes me sick. <laughs> I was a source of irritation to him. And then later on I learned Proverbs 27:14. He that blesseth his friend with a loud voice rising early in the morning, it shall be counted a curse to him. <laughs> now that's kind of a funny illustration, but you know, people can really be irritating. Uh, and a lot of our source of irritation is from, from people. Uh, another source is environment. You know, just the physical things of life. Uh, a large family and one bathroom. Uh, that can be a source of irritation. I've had it happen where you're trying to sleep and a thousand birds are in the tree outside, you know. Uh, it's your environment. Nothing you can do about it, but it can be quite irritating. The third one is yourself or self. Your own defects, your own deficiencies, even illnesses. Uh, I'll never forget hearing of a, I think I actually saw a, a clip of it, big basketball player, I think he was a Yugoslavian. He got angry about something, and he went and headbutted the wall, broke his back, and was in a wheelchair the rest of his life. Can you imagine how irritating that would be, how <laughs> awful that would be to have done that to yourself? Uh, yeah. uh, what a terrible thing. And we do that. We do things, and, 
and, and then we get the results of it and we think, why did I do that? Uh, maybe regularly giving into a certain sin. And, and we think, why did I do that? Uh, bad results from our own carelessness. So there's, there's a lot. These are some major sources of irritation. And then there's two kinds. One is those we can and should remove. You got a squeaky door? Oil it. <laughs> you know, there's things that we should remove. You got a bad habit? Change it. Don't just let it irritate you. Do something about it. There's things we should and we can and should remove. But then there's also those we cannot remove. Uh, there's irritations that you just can't do anything about. And what God is saying here in Romans chapter 8, and let me encourage you, believe God. Believe God. God says, we know that all things, ooh, he didn't say some things, work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. Uh, this could not be a simpler message than that, really. You know, we've got different notes in that, but really the message is, is extremely simple. Uh, God has a purpose, and whatever happens, we need to look for God's purpose. Uh, there's a lot of things you could say at this point. You know, sometimes he's increasing our sensitivity to the needs of others. Sometimes he's expanding our world of opportunity. You know, I know people who have ministries because of a problem they had in the past. Uh, my, my brother, uh, his wife died, and be, because he saw how people didn't know how to talk to him after her death, he, he took up a ministry uh, for grieve, people who were grieving. You know, God gave, he saw that as an opportunity from God. Uh, sometimes it develops inward qualities. But there's a couple of warnings here. If we react wrongly, we destroy their potential benefit. You know, if we react wrongly to the pressures and troubles of life, You'll just destroy their potential benefit. Whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. A good example of this is Paul and his thorn in the flesh in 2 Corinthians chapter 12. Now, I think God purposely didn't tell us what, God, what Paul's thorn in the flesh was. We kind of have an idea, but uh, Paul had a, a physical problem. It, it, it was a problem. He didn't like it. He asked God to take it away. Uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse, uh, uh, verse 8. He said, I, I besought the Lord thrice that it might depart from me. Here was God's answer. My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. His answer to Paul was, I'm going to work through that weakness. This, there's a benefit here. <laughs> and then Paul's reply was, Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. See, because of his trouble, because of his infirmity, God could use that in a greater way than he could have if he didn't have it. We don't always like God's will, do we? <laughs> we don't always like the, you know, what God says, here, here I'm, I'm going to do something, but uh, Paul's thorn in the flesh. We used the illustration when we talked about authority of the, the hammer and the chisel, how you know, God uses authority to to chisel off the, the bad bits. Well, when we're talking about irritations, it's kind of like a, a file. God uses the troubles of life like a file to file us down. And that's, uh, that's not an easy thing when you think about it. So if we react wrongly, we destroy their potential benefit. But also, take warning here, if we react wrongly to the problems of life, you also run the risk of bringing new irritations. God will say, well, they're not responding to that one. Let's try this one. Uh, watch out. Uh, you may not like what's happening right now, but it, something else could come along. God just has a particular purpose that he's trying to work. Now, I'm going to do a couple of diagrams tonight. I gave you a bit of extra space on your page there so that you could do some doodling along with me. Uh, wrong responses to, to irritations. I don't want any signs held up 1 to 10 of my artwork, okay? Uh, this, is, this, is, this is you. Uh, this is the problem. Now, I put legs and hands on it because a lot of times it is a person, but sometimes it's just a situation. Uh, a wrong response to, to trouble. You know, here's, the, here's the conflict. You know, it's coming at you. A wrong, one wrong response is to defend yourself. 
You know, what we're looking for in any situation should be the truth. And the problem is, a lot of times, instead of looking for the truth, we look for an excuse. It's true, isn't it? You see it magnified in children, but it's in us adults as, as well. And a, a wrong response is, here's the problem, and we, we defend ourselves. Other times, we blame others. That's a good way to deal with the problem. It's somebody else's fault. Thank God for the government. We can blame them for everything. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kidding. Uh, the other area that you need to grab hold of here is responsibility. Truth and responsibility. You know, that's the, some of the major things that a counselor will try to get you to see if you go to a counselor. They want you to see the truth of the situation and your responsibility. You know, in a problem, you're very rarely completely responsible, but you're responsible for your part. You know, if somebody else is 90% responsible, Hey, that means you're 10%. You deal with your part. That's all you can do. And if you'll deal with the truth. The, the other is to uh, hold in the anger. I'll put it here. You probably can't even see that. It's so low. Ecclesiastes 7.9 says, Anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Uh, we don't need to hold it in. Now, I'm not saying let it out and, and rip on people or anything. But we need to, to give it to the Lord. This is a wrong way of, of dealing uh, with irritations, with trouble. Now, the right response requires a commitment to God's purpose. You know, we, we read there, Romans 8, 28 and 29. God has a purpose. His purpose is that we be like Jesus. Um, here's you. Here's the problem. Um, and here comes the problem. Now, a right response... We'll put God here. A right response looks to the Lord and lets the Lord deal with our problem. Now, that's very rarely, we're very rarely one or the other. We're usually a little bit of a mixture. I remember somebody saying this, and it really stuck with me. He said, our glance should be on our problem. Our gaze should be on the Lord. You know, we're going to have problems. We have to deal with problems. But that's not our focus. But we shouldn't focus on our problem. Problems will come. Our focus should be on the Lord. But that requires a commitment to God's purpose and to let him be God. You know, there's just some things we don't get to decide. <laughs> now, if I'd chosen, I'd been a lot taller and I'd had a, a deep bass voice. <laughs> you know, I'd have played basketball, been able to, to slam dunk and sing bass in the, in the quartet. I didn't get to do that. <laughs> I'm not even close. But God knew what I, I needed to be. If, I, if I'd been that, it wouldn't be me. It'd be somebody else. I don't know who it'd be. <laughs> wouldn't be here tonight. Uh, number one, I, I just, I'll just put the numbers here. One, two, and three. I won't write them on there. But number one, thank God for the irritation. That, that sounds almost nonsensical, doesn't it? Now, I guess in some cases, we don't necessarily thank God for it, but we do thank God in it, in everything give thanks. But we do thank, we are thankful for what God is doing. Uh, you know, God always has a good purpose. There's a lot of, of things that we can, we can think about at this point. Um, he's bigger than the source of your irritation. You know, our God is, is able to deal with anything that comes your way. Uh, we see from Romans 8 that he's allowed it for our benefit, for your benefit. That he's allowed it for, for good. Uh, God wants the best for us. He has a good purpose. A and we need to be thankful because his work and reputation are, are affected by our response. You ever thought about that? You know, when trouble comes in your life, there's people who know that you're a Christian. You might be the only Christian they know. And if you respond just as badly as they do, they're going to think, well, what's the use of being a Christian? They have trouble, they respond. I have trouble, I respond. We should have a different response. Now, it doesn't mean that initially we'll always have the, the perfect response, but we should come to that. God should bring us to a, a godly response. And we should understand, uh, if we can't change it, you know, if it's something that, that there's just nothing we can do about, uh, well, I'm, I belong to God. I'm his responsibility. I can trust him. God has some good purpose that he is working. Secondly, identify possible causes. Now, 
we saw that one of the sources of irritation is self. And sometimes we, we just need to stop and think, did I in any way cause this? Now, a lot of problems are nothing to do with something we cause, but a lot of times they are. Uh, sometimes they happen because of reproofs or reminders. Something I'm doing or something I've, that I've done. Uh, make sure your conscience is clear. Uh, you'll find that a lot of times life is, is a reflection. Y you're getting back what you're doing. Have you ever been grumpy? Of course, none of you have ever had that happen. Uh, you'll find that a lot of people around you will be grumpy. You ever been angry? You'll find that you'll be dealing with a lot of angry people. <laughs> uh, sometimes life is a reflection, and you need to stop and think, hey, uh, what's my part in all of this? It, it can be really difficult to deal with someone who's like you. I, I had this happen in my life. Uh, I have three children, and I have found that one of my children I found very hard to deal with until I realized the reason he was hard to deal with is he's just like me. <laughs> it's hard to see yourself reflected back to you in a different person. Um, we need to identify possible causes. It's not always possible, but uh, a lot of times we can't. And determine to correct what's wrong and ask forgiveness or make restitution or uh, whatever is involved there. And then thirdly, determine the ultimate objective. Determine the ultimate objective. Now, in general, God is making us like Jesus. But sometimes there's a specific thing that God is doing. Um, you know, when we read Romans 8, 28 and 29, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God. Remember the pearl? The irritation becomes something beautiful. Uh, to them that love God, to them who are the called according to His purpose. And that one word, His, can make all the difference. If you're living for his purpose or your purpose, it makes all the difference. You know, we get things in our mind, I want this, I want this to happen, I want it to happen this time, and God says, no, you're going to go over here and it's going to happen, and nothing's going to happen completely. <laughs> God can really mess up your plans, but he has a good purpose, and his, his way is always better. Um, what qualities does God want to develop in you? I, I put a few of them there in the notes, but there's a whole, a whole slew of things. You know, if you're having to deal with someone who's hard to love, have you ever had that happen? <laughs> that happens all the time. God is trying to develop love in you. You know, there's no challenge to loving someone who's lovely. But th there's people that are hard to love. Maybe it's you. Yeah. And you appreciate it when people go past the, the difficulty and love you. Uh, circumstances of sorrow. We all face circumstances of sorrow. God is trying to develop the fruit of the Spirit in you. Joy in spite of pain. You know, the fruit of the Spirit is not dependent on circumstances. If you don't know the fruit of the Spirit and you don't uh, not uh, uh, familiar with that, you, you need to get familiar with what God is trying to develop in you, His fruit in you. Love, joy, peace, and, and so on. Uh, sometimes you face conditions of confusion. You ever had that happen? Where, oh, things are just in confusion. Uh, well, God is trying to develop an inward peace and a steady confidence in you. Now, we can have peace in the midst of a storm. Sometimes you have irritating inconveniences. Yeah, I, I don't know how it is with you. I find the little things are harder to deal with sometimes than the big things. Uh, you know, prostate cancer, heart disease, no worries. But you drop that, that screw and it goes under the sink and you can't get it out and you think, oh man. <laughs> you know, you get, you get irritated. It's a little stupid little thing. Now, there's a lot of irritating inconveniences. God is developing flexibility. God is developing sympathy. Um, the the uh, unwelcome responsibilities that sometimes come. Yeah, that, that happens, doesn't it? Where you've got to do something and you, you hadn't planned on it, you didn't want to do it. God is developing consistent trustworthiness. You go on and on with this, couldn't you? Uh, people who intrude. Boy, you ever have that happen? You're set to watch your favorite show. And in comes Mrs. Jones, you know, whoever. Uh, surrender of personal rights, putting, making people more important than, uh, than things. Uh, temptations to do wrong. Uh, that's a problem. We all face that. Well, God is developing self-control in us. God is developing purity in us. Uh, there's a wrong response to trouble, and that's, uh, that's to... Hit it, hit it head on, defend self, blame someone else, hold it in. But there's also a right response. 
We look to Jesus, really. Now, Lord, what, what do you want to accomplish uh, with what's going on in my life? And uh, encourage you this evening, remember God's purpose. God's purpose is that we be conformed to the image of his son. Uh, I feel like I've, I've tried to hit too much tonight, and I hope I haven't missed everything. But I hope you understand just this simple, basic Christian concept. Uh, God loves you. God knows you. God has a purpose. And, you know, we live in a sinful, wicked world. We don't thank God for sin. But in the midst of sin, we thank God. You know, in the midst of our trouble and our irritations and you know, all the things that we face, God has a good purpose. And God can use those things that are happening in your life uh, to make you like Jesus. Jesus calls us to be like him. L let me give you a couple of verses here. Matthew 11, verse 29. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me. For I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. Doesn't that sound refreshing? Rest unto your souls. That's Matthew eleven twenty nine. 29. In Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Looking unto Jesus. And then one last portion of Scripture, 1 Peter 2, uh, verses 19 to, to 21. 1 Peter 2, 19. For this is thankworthy if a man for conscience toward God endure grief, suffering wrongfully. For what glory is it if when ye be buffeted for your faults, ye shall take it patiently? But if when ye do well and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, this is acceptable with God. For even hereunto were ye called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. See, God's purpose is that we be like Jesus. And he gave us the example, and we're to follow uh, in his, his steps. I'm going to have us uh, sing uh, the song, page 542 in our songbook there, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. And then I'd like to end with uh, the chorus, To Be Like Jesus. We can either...